Imagine you've bought a pickup truck with your hard-earned money, only to later find it doesn't meet your expectations, leaving you regretting the investment. But what if you were forewarned? I'm sure this thought just sparked a sense of relief within you. Welcome back, truck enthusiasts. Today, we're delving into the world of automotive mishaps and design disasters. Get ready to discover unnoticed facts as we journey through pickup truck history to uncover the 50 worst pickup trucks ever made. From questionable design choices to downright engineering nightmares, this compilation leaves no tailgate unturned. So, without further delay, let's dive right in. On number 50, we have the Nissan Titan. Introducing the Nissan Titan, offering a unique engine option with its 5.6-liter Endurance V8 that provides sufficient power and torque for towing and hauling needs. As you step inside, treat yourself to spacious and comfortable surroundings, offering modern amenities and features that make long drives enjoyable. Additionally, if you desire off-road packages, it fulfills that need too. But what makes it a worse choice? Well, the Nissan Titan offers relatively poor fuel economy compared to other trucks in its class. While as a pickup, it should have maximum towing capability, it falls short in that regard. Additionally, in an era where technology is rapidly advancing in vehicles, the Nissan Titan has been criticized for its outdated infotainment system and lack of advanced driver assistant features found in competitors' trucks. Overall, while the Nissan Titan has its strengths, its shortcomings may make it a less desirable choice for some truck buyers. On number 49, we have the Fiat Fullback Cross. The Fiat Fullback Cross offers a powertrain consisting of a 2.4-liter .4 four-cylinder diesel engine, which seems to be less powerful compared to others in its class. Furthermore, it also falls short in terms of towing capabilities, making it less suitable for heavy-duty tasks. Curious about its interior? Well, it also doesn't meet expectations. Some reviewers have criticized the interior quality of the fullback cross, citing cheap materials and a lack of modern amenities compared to its rivals. Obviously, modern pickup trucks are expected to be more innovative, but this one lacks those features. Here's something more to consider. Due to its limited popularity and potentially lower perceived value compared to other pickup trucks in its class, the fullback cross may suffer from poor resale value, resulting in a higher depreciation rate over time. On number 48, we have the Ram 3500. The Ram 3500 is proudly known for its impressive towing capacity, making it a favorite among those who need to haul heavy loads. One can expect it to be equipped with powerful engine options, providing ample horsepower and torque for various tasks. Its output figures completely depend on the model year, but it typically produces upwards of 400 horsepower and well over 800 pound-foot of torque. Despite its power, it offers lower fuel efficiency compared to smaller trucks or vehicles with less towing capacity. Being a heavy-duty truck, it comes with higher maintenance and repair costs, which might be a concern for some buyers. Recent models often feature luxurious interiors with high-quality materials and advanced technology, offering a comfortable ride for both drivers and passengers. Consider that some drivers find heavy-duty trucks like the Ram 3500 to have a stiffer ride quality compared to lighter vehicles, which can be less comfortable for daily work or long road trips. Thus, it can be concluded that while the Ram 35 is undoubtedly a capable truck with many desirable features, it may not be the best choice for everyone, depending on their individual needs and preferences. On number 47, we have the 2022 Chevrolet Colorado. The 2022 Chevrolet Colorado offers a range of trim levels, allowing buyers to choose between basic work truck configurations to upgraded and feature-rich models like the ZR2. No doubt, the Colorado offers a selection of engines, including a capable V6 and a turbocharged four-cylinder diesel, providing options for different performance needs and fuel efficiency preferences. However, when it comes to towing capacity, it offers a decent amount, while some other trucks in its class boast higher towing capacities. Did you know? Some owners and critics have raised concerns about the long-term reliability of certain components in the Chevrolet Colorado, particularly related to transmission issues and electronics. Well, if you head inside it, despite being a mid-sized truck, the Colorado is comfortable and has a relatively spacious interior, with available features like heated seats and touchscreen infotainment systems. So, it has certain plus points, but at the same time, it's not completely satisfactory in its features when compared with others of its race. 
On number 46, we have the Mitsubishi Raider. Introduced back in 2005, the Mitsubishi Raider, a mid-sized pickup, had a relatively short production run that ended in 2009. Did you know? The Mitsubishi Raider was essentially a rebadged version of the Dodge Dakota. No doubt, while the Raider offered a choice of engines, including a V6 and a V8, its performance failed to impress. Many reviewers found the ride quality to be subpar, with handling that was less refined compared to rival trucks in its class. Wondering about its looks? Well, let me tell you, by the time the Mitsubishi Raider was introduced, the design of the Dodge Dakota, on which it was based, was already aging. This simply meant that the Raider lacked the modern styling and features the buyers were looking for in a new pickup truck. It struggled to gain attention in the market, leading to poor sales numbers throughout its production run, ultimately discontinuing the model after just a few years. Overall, it may be appealing to those who favor its power and towing capacities, but it gained losing reputation among those who felt its styling was outdated. On number 45, we have the Isuzu Hombre. The Isuzu Hombre was a compact pickup truck produced by Isuzu from 1996 to 2000. While it shared its platform with the Chevrolet S10 and GMC Sonoma, it was found lacking in uniqueness among them. This creation had a reputation for reliability issues, including problems with its engine and transmission. So, the owners faced disappointment due to frequent repairs and maintenance. Furthermore, it comprised inadequate crash protection and outdated safety features, thus maintaining poor safety ratings. Despite its shortcomings, the Isuzu Ombre did have some interesting features, such as its optional extended cab and available V6 engine. However, these features were often overshadowed by its drawbacks, ultimately contributing to its status as one of the worst pickup trucks ever made. On number 44, we have the Suzuki Equator. Did you know? The Suzuki Equator was a compact pickup truck produced by Suzuki in partnership with Nissan. It had a relatively short production span, being available only from 2009 to 2012. Suzuki's brand recognition in the truck market was relatively low compared to established players like Ford, Chevrolet, and Toyota. This possibly contributed to the Equator's struggles in gaining attention in the market. A very common reason for its criticism was its underpowered engine options, particularly the base 2.5-liter four-cylinder engine. This engine lacked the performance and towing capability found in other competitors' trucks. Additionally, it lacked advanced safety features and, thus, could not withstand its competitors. It also had limited customization options, leaving potential customers disappointed who were looking for more flexibility in their purchases. While the Suzuki Equator may not have been the worst pickup truck ever made, it failed to establish itself as a successful one. On number 43, we have the GMC Canyon. The GMC Canyon offers a range of powerful engine options, including a diesel variant, providing versatility and efficiency in its segment. Yet, some consumers have reported issues with the reliability of certain engine configurations, leading to concerns about long-term durability and maintenance costs. As we head inside, a comfortable interior with modern amenities greets us, but its material choice is not up to the mark. And did you know, this one boasts off-roading capabilities too, but still, its experience doesn't satisfy many consumers. It also offers various trim levels and customization options. Despite that fact, the Canyon's pricing structure and overall value proposition might not be as competitive as some of its rivals, potentially making it a less appealing choice for budget-conscious consumers. Enjoying the video so far? Then make sure you smash the like button right away. On number 42, we have the Mazda B Series. Introducing the Mazda B Series, which has been a mainstay for several decades, with production starting in the 1960s. Here's a fact. Many models of the Mazda B series were rebadged versions of Ford Ranger pickups. On one hand, this partnership profitably helped Mazda enter the pickup truck market, while on the other hand, it also led to confusion among consumers regarding the brand's identity. When compared to competitors in its class, Mazda lacks modern features and technology, making it less attractive to buyers who may be seeking a more comfortable and convenient driving experience. According to reviews, some owners have had positive experiences with their Mazda B-Series trucks, while others have reported significant durability issues, including engine and transmission problems, rust, and structural issues. Some of its older models are usually criticized for their lack of safety features, including issues such as poor crash test ratings and limited safety equipment options. Overall, while the Mazda B-Series may have strengths in affordability and fuel efficiency, its reputation as one of the worst pickup trucks ever made can't be ignored due to its shortcomings. On number 41, we have the Nissan Navara. Did you know? 
The Nissan Navara is also known as the Nissan Frontier in some markets. Well, this creation has a strong global presence with recognition for its rugged design and off-road capabilities. Of course, it offers various trims and configurations that suit different needs with impressive towing capabilities and unforgettable off-road adventures. It also boasts modern features such as touchscreen infotainment systems, advanced safety technologies, and comfort amenities. But what about its downsides? The reliability issues with the Navara, including engine and transmission problems, can lead to costly repairs. Furthermore, its interior still lags behind competitors in terms of comfort and overall quality. Additionally, its fuel economy may not be as competitive as you would expect, and its towing capabilities may not satisfy everyone. So choose wisely if you're looking forward to owning one. On number 10, we have the Chevrolet S10. The Chevrolet S10 debuted in 1982 to compete in the small truck market. It offered different engine choices and body styles, making it popular among people seeking a smaller yet still useful truck. One can expect it in various setups, including regular and extended cabs with different bed lengths. Under the hood lies a 1.9 liter inline four engine that boasts a payload capacity of up to 1500 pounds, depending on the configuration. Here's a fact. The S10 was also available in a sportier variant known as the Chevrolet S10 SS. But this sporty appeal faced criticism for its fuel efficiency, as high performance engines tend to consume more fuel. Problems also arose with growing rust in areas such as the wheel wells, bed, and undercarriage. Overall, it did not offer a smooth drive. Owners frequently complain about the rough and uncomfortable ride quality, thus it adds to our list of worst pickup trucks ever made. On number 39, we have the 1997 Ford Ranger. The 1997 Ford Ranger was part of the fourth generation of Rangers that faced criticism for its relatively outdated design and lack of significant updates compared to competitors at the time. While it offered multiple engine options, including a 2.3-liter inline-4, a 3-liter V6, and a 4-liter V6, providing varying levels of power, it faced stiff competitions in terms of fuel efficiency, where it fell short. As for its interior, one couldn't simply expect it to be lavish with extra comfort. Rather, it offered outdated amenities that robbed drivers of their comfort. However, it was available in regular cab and extended cab configurations, offering different levels of passenger and cargo space to suit various needs. Overall, this model did not have much to offer and hence did not have a positive impact on buyers. On number 38, we have the 2006 Nissan Frontier. The Nissan Frontier has been in production since 1997, making it one of the longest running models in the truck segment. In the mid-size pickup world, the 2006 Nissan Frontier took its place as part of the second Frontier generation. Let's deep dive into it. Under the hood, you had choices. A 2.5-liter four-cylinder engine with about 154 horsepower, or a beefier four-liter V6 pushing around 261 horsepower. Towing capacity ranged from 3,500 to 6,500 pounds, which is a pretty good range. Fuel efficiency played its part, averaging around 15 to 20 miles per gallon in the city and 20 to 25 miles per gallon on the highway. But despite these promising specs, the 2006 Frontier found its way onto our list of not so great pickups. The culprit, transmission troubles. This issue took a toll on the truck's durability, making it a less than ideal choice, especially in the used market. If you're eyeing a Frontier, you might want to explore other model years for a better experience. And here's a little fun fact. In 2006, Nissan aimed for the Frontier to be the top dog in the pickup world. The road didn't turn out as smooth as they had hoped. On number 37, we have the Mercedes-Benz X-Class. The Mercedes-Benz X-Class is an interesting vehicle aimed at those who appreciate luxury and are willing to pay a premium price for it. But is the price justified? Let's delve into it. Developed in collaboration with Nissan, the X-Class offered various trim levels and engine options. However, it faced criticism for its underwhelming performance, particularly in terms of towing capacity and off-road capability compared to its rivals. Furthermore, if you sought customization, this model did not offer much. While the creators spared no expense in making it lavish, with the utmost attention to the prestige of the brand, unfortunately, they fell short in making it practical. Finally, after receiving such negative feedback, Mercedes-Benz decided to discontinue production of the X-Class in 2020, citing its poor sales performance as a key factor. Hey folks, if you're enjoying this video and want to see more content like this, please consider subscribing to our channel. On number 36, we have the Dodge Rampage. The Dodge Rampage was produced by Chrysler and had a short lifespan from 1982 to 1984. 
It represented a unique concept of a compact pickup, offering a front-wheel drive configuration built on the Chrysler L platform. Here's a fun fact. The Rampage featured a unibody construction, similar to that of a car, rather than the body-on-frame construction typical of trucks. However, this design choice made it less durable and capable of heavy-duty work. Typically, it offered a choice of two engines, a 2.2-liter inline-four and a 2.5-liter inline-four. Surprisingly, both engines were considered underpowered for a pickup truck, resulting in low performance. Despite being marketed as a versatile vehicle suitable for both work and everyday use, the Rampage failed to live up to its promise, ultimately leading to its early demise. On number 35, we have the Toyota Tacoma. Here's a fact. The Toyota Tacoma has been one of the best-selling mid-sized trucks in the United States for many years. It duly holds a reputation for its value, promising a good investment for those looking for a long-term vehicle. It is well known for its exceptional off-roading capabilities with models like the TRD Pro, and it comes in a variety of configurations, including different cab sizes, bed lengths, and trim levels. If it's all good, then why is it on this list? Well, the Tacoma offers a stiff and bumpy ride with a lower grade of comfort and luxury features. Apart from this, you can expect it to be more fuel efficient, which is again a hefty problem for consumers. But ignoring all these shortcomings and taking note of its popularity and reputation for reliability, the Tacoma is rated at higher prices compared to similar trucks from other manufacturers, thus making it an incompatible choice. On number 34, we have the Chevrolet Avalanche. Do you know what the most attractive feature of the Chevrolet Avalanche was? Well, it was widely known for its innovative mid-gate feature, allowing the rear cabin wall to be folded down, expanding the truck bed into the cabin area. This versatile design made it popular among consumers who needed both passenger and cargo space. Surprisingly, it inherited the functionality of both an SUV and a pickup truck. Though the Avalanche was available with various engine options over the years, consumers criticized it for its relatively low fuel efficiency, especially considering its size and weight. For adventure lovers, it did offer four-wheel drive options, but enthusiasts didn't find it satisfactory compared to dedicated pickup truck models like the Chevrolet Silverado or Ford F-150. Furthermore, some reviewers noted that the Avalanche's handling and ride quality could feel less refined compared to other vehicles in its class, thus failing to stand as an ideal choice for all. On number 33, we have the Mazda Rotary. Did you know? The Mazda Rotary engine, also known as the Wankel engine, is indeed an interesting piece of automotive engineering. However, the design of rotary engines involves the rotor moving within the housing, leading to unique wear patterns over time. This eventually results in decreased engine lifespan and potentially higher maintenance costs. Be attentive as we disclose one of its notable shortcomings, its reputation for burning oil which means owners need to keep a close eye on oil levels and be prepared for more frequent oil top-ups and changes. Also, if you attempt to buy one, be sure to be prepared to meet the struggle of modern emission standards. Wondering about its engine power? While rotary engines can rev high and produce impressive power outputs, like Mazda's legendary rotary engine, the 13B REW found in the RX-7 FD, capable of producing around 255 to 280 horsepower in stock form. It depends on the model year and trim level. Sadly, they often lack low-end torque compared to piston engines. This can result in less responsive performance at lower engine speeds, which may not suit all driving conditions. Subscribe to my channel now to discover an amazing lineup of impressive pickups and their secret tales that will rev up your excitement and keep you thrilled. On number 32, we have the Dodge Ram Charger. The Ram Charger was Dodge's full-size SUV offering produced from 1974 to 1993 model years. It was initially intended to compete with vehicles like the Chevrolet Blazer and Ford Bronco. Unlike many SUVs of its time, the Ram Charger had an available convertible top option, allowing for an open-air driving experience. With its robust construction and rugged design, it was well-suited for off-road adventures. Now, it is categorized as one of the worst due to its poor fuel economy. Its large V8 engines were thirsty especially in urban driving conditions, making it expensive to operate. Additionally, its size and weight made it difficult to handle, particularly in tight spaces. Its large turning radius and limited visibility made parking and maneuvering a challenge. Furthermore, for those who prioritize comfort, its interior might feel outdated and lacking in comfort and convenience features. Did you know? Older models of the Ram Charger lack modern safety features such as airbags, anti-lock brakes, and advanced crumple zones, which was a cause for concern among buyers. 
Such disappointing drawbacks adversely impacted its reputation, earning it a place on our list of worst pickup trucks. Earning it a place on our list of worst pickups. On number 31, we have the Chevrolet Love. Yet another collaboration between General Motors and Isuzu Motors resulted in the innovative creation of the Chevrolet Love. For those curious to know, what is Love? Love stands for Light Utility Vehicle. Like many vehicles from the 1970s and 1980s, the Chevy Love was prone to rust, particularly in areas with harsh winters or coastal climates, which led to compromise with its structural integrity over time. Here's a fact for you. This pickup was renowned for its fuel-efficient engines, particularly the four-cylinder options, but it still lacked power. Moreover, its smaller size could accommodate limited towing and payload capacities compared to larger pickup trucks. Soon its production paused and ultimately ceased, so finding replacement parts can be challenging. This could potentially increase maintenance costs or lead to difficulties in repairing older models. On number 30, we have the Dodge Dude. The Dodge Dude was only produced for a brief period in the 1970s, making it relatively rare and sought after by collectors today. It was available in vibrant colors that made it an eye-catcher on the road. Here's a fun fact. Surprisingly, some enthusiasts are concerned about its name. Yes, you heard it right. While the name Dude may have been catchy, it also garnered some criticism for its perceived lack of seriousness. Now let's focus on its shortcomings regarding quality control issues, including rust problems and mechanical reliability issues, which eventually led to frustration and disappointment for owners. Additionally, this creation consumed more fuel, which raised a question mark in practical minds. Some drivers found the Dodge Dude's handling to be less than ideal, with a stiff ride and imprecise steering, and were not satisfied with the overall driving experience. These might be the reasons for its limited production and lower resale value compared to more mainstream pickup truck options, potentially leading to financial loss for owners, thus marking it as the worst truck. On number 29, we have the GMC S15. The GMC S15 shared its platform with the Chevrolet S10, which was known for its lackluster build quality and reliability issues. The irony of this platform sharing meant that any flaws present in the S10 were likely present in the S15 as well. The engine, being the heart of any vehicle, was found to be underpowered for the S15. Consequently, it struggled to provide adequate performance, especially when hauling heavy loads or towing. This left potential buyers feeling disinterested and dissatisfied. Moreover, the S15 suffered from numerous quality control issues, lacked modern safety features and crash protection, and featured an outdated design, among other shortcomings. Given these factors, it's understandable why someone would hesitate to invest their money in such a worthless pickup. Consequently, it's widely regarded as one of the worst pickups ever made. On number 28, we have the Toyota T100. The Toyota T100 was a pickup truck produced by Toyota from 93 to 1998. Well, this one was often criticized for its size. Supposedly, it fell between the compact and full-size pickup truck categories, which led to confusion among buyers who weren't sure where it fit in the market. In its early years, the T100 was offered with relatively underpowered engine options compared to its competitors, which resulted in its lagging performance and towing capabilities. Then wait, did you know? Unlike many of its competitors, the T100 never offered a V8 engine option, which was a notable drawback. Many others also criticized the pickup for its low-quality interior that disrupted its driving elegance. Despite Toyota's reputation for quality and reliability, the T100 struggled to gain attention in the highly competitive pickup truck market. Its lack of distinctive features and performance capabilities contributed to its poor sales numbers. On number 27, we have the GMC Sonoma. The GMC Sonoma was a compact pickup truck that was highlighted for its smaller size, ultimately signaling limited towing and hauling capabilities compared to larger trucks in its class. Throughout its production run, the Sonoma was offered a range of engine options, including inline 4 and V6 engines. Yet, some of the engine choices were criticized for their lackluster performance and fuel efficiency. Did you know? The Sonoma was available with an off-road package called the ZR2, which improved its off-road capabilities. But, sadly, it was still outclassed by dedicated off-road trucks like the Ford Ranger FX4. The Sonoma was often rated low due to its outdated design and reliability issues, including problems with components like the transmission, electrical system, and suspension, which eventually degraded its reputation in the market. On number 26, we have the Mitsubishi L200. Did you know? 
Another name for the Mitsubishi L200 is the Mitsubishi Triton, which is quite popular in some markets. However, it has several reasons for being a worse choice. Let's count on our tips as we unfold them one by one. Firstly, its outdated interiors lack modern features and technology. Then, its ride may not be as smooth and comfortable as you expect. Additionally, depending on the model year, the Mitsubishi L200 might lack some advanced safety features that are becoming standard in newer vehicles, which could be a concern for safety-conscious buyers. While the L200 is considered reliable, some owners have reported issues with mechanical reliability and build quality, which could lead to higher maintenance costs over time. Thus, its worst features align it as the worst choice. Halfway done. I hope you've spotted some new pickup trucks you've never heard of before. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to receive updates from our informative channel first. On number 25, we have the Jeep Comanche. Here are some fun facts. The Jeep Comanche was one of the few compact pickup trucks available with a unibody design, making it stand out from traditional body-on-frame trucks of its time. But as you consider its benefits in terms of ride quality and handling, don't overlook its shortcomings, which claim it to be less durable and less capable of withstanding heavy loads compared to traditional body-on-frame trucks. The Jeep Comanche was only produced for a relatively short period, from 1986 to 1992, so finding spare parts or support for these vehicles can be challenging. It has earned a strong reputation for reliability issues, including problems with the engine, transmission, and electrical systems. This can lead to frequent repairs and maintenance costs. While a pickup is expected to have rugged qualities, don't expect these from this one selectively. It had relatively low payload and towing capacities, which may not meet the needs of buyers requiring heavy-duty hauling or towing capabilities, thus making it a less appealing choice for buyers. On number 24, we have the 2017 GMC Sierra 1500. The 2017 GMC Sierra 1500 offered a range of powerful engine options, including V6 and V8 choices, with 285 horsepower and instant torque of 300 pound-foot which are sufficient for towing and hauling capabilities. However, one common complaint about it was its relatively low fuel efficiency, especially with the larger engine options, which could lead to higher operating costs over time. Moreover, maintenance and repair costs for the Sierra 1500, particularly with its larger engines and advanced technology features, were higher. Here's a fact. While the Sierra 1500 offered a capable and rugged ride, some drivers found its handling to be less refined compared to other trucks in its segment, resulting in a less comfortable driving experience, especially on rough roads. In conclusion, the 2017 GMC Sierra 1500 had its strengths, such as powerful engine options and a comfortable interior, but potential buyers should consider its drawbacks, including poor fuel economy, high ownership costs, limited ride comfort, and reliability concerns, before making a purchase decision. On number 23, we have the Chevrolet El Camino. First introduced by Chevrolet in 1959, the El Camino was popularly known as a coupe utility vehicle, combining elements of both a car and a pickup truck. Throughout its production history, it was offered a range of engine options, from economical inline sixes to high performance VAs, which seem quite appealing to its buyers. However, one cannot ignore its negative characteristics. These include low payload capacity, inability to ride as smoothly as a dedicated car or truck, lack of spacious rear seating arrangement, and many more. Thus, all such negative reviews affect its resale value, with some models depreciating more quickly than more mainstream vehicles. Though it was a charming vehicle, its hybrid trait did add to its depreciation. On number 22, we have the Hummer H2. Here's a fact. Introduced back in 2002 by General Motors, the Hummer H2 was originally designed as a civilian version of the military Humvee, shortly known as the H1. And did you know, the H2 is a smaller and more consumer-friendly alternative to the H1, but it still lacked many of its traits. One of the most significant drawbacks of the Hummer H2 is its notoriously poor fuel efficiency. Being larger in size and heavily weighted, it consumes more fuel, making it expensive to operate, especially when gas prices rise. Though it had a rugged appearance and inherited off-road capabilities, the Hummer H2 may not be the most practical choice for everyday use. Another concern was an important one for its environmental impact, particularly its high emissions and fuel consumption. In an era of growing concern about climate change and carbon footprints, owning and driving such a vehicle may be viewed as irresponsible by some. Now, what else can one expect? Ultimately, its production ceased in 2009 due to a combination of factors, including declining sales, economic recession, and increasing environmental concerns. Which other trucks do you think we have in store for you today? Go leave your guesses in the comments down below.
On number 21, we have the Explorer Sport Track. Surprisingly, the Explorer Sport Track was one of the first vehicles to combine the comfort and utility of an SUV with the cargo space and versatility of a pickup truck bed. It grabs Seeker's attention with the innovative cargo bed design, four-wheel drive, and inherited off-road features. However, people miss out on other factors, which counted as a worse choice. When the Explorer was compared to traditional pickup trucks, its payload capacity was found to be lower, limiting its ability to carry heavy loads. The inclusion of a pickup bed often meant sacrificing some interior space, making the Explorer Sport Track less roomy and comfortable for passengers. Even sometimes, it suffered from compromised handling and ride quality. So, overall, while the Explorer Sport Track offered a blend of utility and versatility, its shortcomings eventually made it a less desirable choice for some consumers. On number 20, we have the Ford Courier. Did you know, the Ford Courier was actually a rebadged version of the Mazda B-Series pickup truck. Essentially, it was a Ford-branded Mazda truck, so much so that at times it may have caused identity issues for some buyers. It had a compact size, which again was a problem for those who expected a pickup to carry heavy loading capacity, but this one did not promise to fulfill this. Even the early models of the Ford Courier had relatively underpowered engines compared to other trucks in its class. Now, are you a person who was swayed by unique design? Then get ready to be disappointed again, because the Ford Courier remained relatively unchanged for many years. Thus, its outdated appearance could be seen as a drawback for buyers looking for a more contemporary truck. Furthermore, it lacked modern safety features, crash protection, advanced features, and amenities, and was also prone to reliability issues as it aged. So why would this truck, full of disappointment, appeal to anyone? On number 19, we have the Chevy Silverado. Dating back to 1999, when the Chevy Silverado was introduced as a successor to the long-standing Chevrolet CK line of trucks, it's widely known for its ruggedness and durability. But why is it listed as worse? Let's find out. The Chevy Silverado has dropped its reputation due to frequent reliability issues, including transmission problems and electrical issues, which lead to costly repairs. And of course, who likes to spare money for such causes frequently? Additionally, earlier produced Silverados were criticized for their lackluster interior quality, with cheap materials and outdated design, while recent models have shown some improvements. Also, due to its large size and powerful engines, the Silverado tends to have lower fuel efficiency compared to some of its competitors, resulting in higher fuel costs over time. Such drawbacks have made it a crucial part of our list, rating it as the worst choice. Like many trucks, Silverado tends to depreciate quickly, meaning owners may experience significant losses in resale value over time. On number 18, we have the Chevrolet K2500. The Chevy K2500 is a creation highly capable of handling rough terrains with its strong chassis and powerful engine, making it not only fit for roaring, but also popular for its capability to handle heavy loads. Throughout its production years, the K2500 was offered with various engine options, including V8 and diesel engines. It was commendably equipped with a four-wheel drive system and a solid axle design, making it fit for off-roading. Despite such handsome features that could steal your heart and prompt you to buy one, it is rated poorly. Stay tuned to learn why. Typically, the K2500 had lower fuel efficiency compared to smaller trucks and SUVs, which could be a concern for those looking to minimize fuel costs. Its larger size also faced criticism, as it made handling the pickup challenging, with many facing difficulty parking in tight spaces, especially in urban areas. No doubt, it demanded high maintenance and repair costs, which was a hindrance for budget-conscious people. What does its comfort tale suggest? It says that the later models of the K2500 offer decent comfort and convenience features, but the earlier models lack some of the modern amenities found in newer trucks, such as advanced safety technologies and infotainment systems. So let's leave it up to you. Let us know in the comments if you would prefer it. And if yes, don't forget to mention the reason. On number 17, we have the Ford Ranchero. Here comes another early example of a car-based pickup truck, the Ford Ranchero, which interestingly blends the comfort and style of a car with the utility of a truck bed. It was introduced in 1957 and thereafter smartly marketed, highlighting its unique blend. Furthermore, the Ford Ranchero was built on the same platform as the Ford Falcon, allowing for cost-saving measures in its production. Since the Ranchero was a car-based design, it offered limited payload capacity compared to traditional pickup trucks. That simply meant it couldn't handle heavy loads or towing tasks effectively. Furthermore, its suspension, optimized for comfort rather than heavy hauling, led to instability when carrying heavy cargo. Thus, many felt its handling characteristics were less secure, especially when navigating rough terrain or towing heavy trailers. Here's a fact. 
Some models of the Ranchero were prone to body flex, especially in earlier generations. This could lead to rattles, squeaks, and compromised structural integrity over time, affecting the overall durability and longevity of the vehicle. On number 16, we have the Rumble B. The Rumble B was a special edition of the Dodge Ram pickup truck released in 2004 and 2005. Did you know? The Rumble Bee stood out with its distinctive exterior styling, featuring black paint with yellow racing stripes, similar to the classic Bumblebee color scheme. Notably, it was powered by a potent 5.7-liter Hemi V8 engine, offering ample performance for those who crave speed and power. Even in the interior, special touches like yellow stitching on the seats and steering wheel added to its appeal. However, these flashy looks weren't enough to cover up its shortcomings, which included a lack of practicality and versatility expected of a pickup truck. Despite its powerful Hemi engine, the Rumblebee was notorious for its poor fuel economy, guzzling gas at an alarming rate. Some owners even reported reliability issues with the Rumblebee, including problems with the transmission, electrical systems, and overall build quality. Consequently, it became very difficult to overlook these negative factors, leading to its early demise. On number 15, we have the Honda Ridgeline. Unlike most traditional trucks that use body-on-frame construction, the Honda Ridgeline utilizes a unibody design similar to that of SUVs, providing a smoother ride and better handling. However, it falls short with relatively low towing capacity, making it less suitable for heavy towing tasks. It did disappoint many, as it performs well on paved roads and in light off-road conditions, but for those who expected more, let me tell you. It is not as capable off-road as some other trucks with traditional four-wheel drive systems and higher ground clearance. Moreover, it received criticism for its unibody construction and crossover-like design, arguing that it lacks the ruggedness and durability expected from a traditional truck. Considering these factors, it positioned a less desirable choice in the pickup truck market. On number 14, we have the Toyota Tundra. Here's a fact. The Toyota Tundra was the first full-size pickup truck from a Japanese manufacturer to compete head-on with American trucks in the U.S. market. When closely compared to its competitors, the Toyota Tundra's design and technology feel dated, especially when considering interior features and infotainment systems. No doubt, it is equipped with powerful engines, yet the lack of variety in engine options is seen as a drawback. Many consumers also argued about its lower fuel efficiency, lagging payload capacity, less refined ride quality, lower resale values, and many more. So why opt for such an option, which is an absolute waste of money wrapped in the catchy name of its identified brand, Toyota? On number 13, we have the Ford Thames Trader. Here comes a product by Ford. Produced in Britain from 1957 to 1965, the Ford Thames Trader. It's relatively known for its modest performance compared to contemporary trucks of its time. Well, let me tell you, its engine options were often considered underpowered for heavy-duty tasks. Also, when other manufacturers were coming up with more innovative and modern designs, the Trader's design already felt outdated. While it was generally known for its durability, it also had its share of reliability issues. Some owners reported frequent breakdowns and maintenance problems. Ultimately, such consequences made it struggle hard to compete in certain markets, limiting its appeal to a broader range of consumers. On number 12, we have the Dodge Dakota. Introduced back in 1986, the Dodge Dakota is considered one of the earliest mid-sized pickup trucks, bridging the gap between compact trucks like the Ford Ranger and larger models like the Ford F-150. Commendably, it was available with V8 engines, which was rare in mid-sized trucks at the time. Additionally, Dodge offered a sporty variant called the Dakota RT, which featured a high-performance V8 engine, which featured a high-performance V8 engine, sport-tuned suspension, and distinctive styling cues. Marketed as a fun-to-drive truck with a bit of muscle car flair, however, these attractive features, instead of making it the best choice, turned it onto one of the worst. The V8 engine options, while powerful, were thirsty, making it less fuel-efficient, and that resulted in higher fuel costs over time. For drivers, it offered harsh ride quality and less refined handling, which was too disappointing. And then, its reliability problems with issues ranging from engine and transmission problems to electrical and suspension issues. Again, this demands frequent repairs and maintenance costs, thus marking it a failure in the eyes of its collectors. On number 11, we have the Subaru Baja. Here comes the Subaru Baja, introduced back in 2003, which can be instantly recognized for its unconventional design. It features a small pickup truck bed attached to the back of a station wagon-like body. Now, what makes it questionable? Let's find out. The Subaru Baja attempted to combine the versatility of a pickup truck with the comfort of a passenger car, but sadly, it didn't excel in either category. 
With its small size, its practicality seemed limited for hauling large items. As for its design, opinions were divided. Some remarked it was appealing, while others felt it was unattractive and awkward. So, here's a task for you. Comment below which side you would favor. While the turbocharged engine option offered improved performance, some owners reported reliability issues and maintenance challenges, particularly with the turbocharged models. Therefore, it faced tough competition from established pickup truck manufacturers, as well as from within Subaru's own lineup. Consumers seeking a true pickup truck experience may have been drawn to the other options with more capability and better value. We're close to our top 10. Hope this video helped keeps you more updated about the automotive world. If you're excited to know which ones are coming up, go ahead and smash that like button right away. On number 10, we have the 2015 Dodge Ram 2500. The 2015 Dodge Ram 2500 offered a range of powerful engine options, including a 5.7 liter V8 and a 6.7 liter Cummins turbo diesel. This, in turn, offered impressive towing capabilities. Yet, some owners have raised concerns over reliability issues, including frequent mechanical problems and electrical issues, which could lead to costly repairs over time. The transmission in the 2015 Ram 2500 has been known to experience issues such as rough shifting, slippage, and even complete failure, causing safety concerns and requiring expensive repairs. Reviews for its driving experience are really bad, claiming the ride quality to be harsh. Moreover, it typically has lower fuel efficiency compared to smaller trucks or vehicles with more fuel-efficient powertrains, thus making owners disappointed with higher fuel costs. So, beware and always remember that it's essential for prospective buyers to thoroughly research and test drive any vehicle before making a purchase decision. On number 9, we have the Subaru Brat. The Subaru Brat was marketed as a dual-purpose vehicle, suited for both recreational and utilitarian purposes. Its small size and all-wheel drive capability made it popular among outdoor enthusiasts. Did you know about its unique seating? One of the most distinctive features of the Brad is its rear-facing jump seats, which were mounted in the cargo bed. While this seating arrangement allowed for additional passengers, it raised safety concerns since passengers seated in the cargo bed were at risk of serious injury. Additionally, long journeys in the rear seats could be uncomfortable, especially compared to modern standards. The Brat's design, with its short wheelbase and raised rear end, could lead to handling and stability issues. Furthermore, other age-related issues, including rust, mechanical problems, and parts availability, also emerged. Thus, this choice is less practical or desirable for some buyers, especially those prioritizing safety and comfort. On number 8, we have the Chevrolet Corvair. The Chevy Corvair produced by General Motors from 1960 to 1969, is often cited as one of the most controversial and criticized cars in automotive history. Did you know, it was one of the first American cars to feature a rear-mounted, air-cooled engine, similar to the Volkswagen Beetle. It offered various body styles, including sedans, coupes, convertibles, station wagons, and even a van model called the Corvair Greenbrier. Here's a fun fact. Perhaps the most famous aspect of the Corvair's legacy is its association with consumer advocate Ralph Nader. His book, Unsafe at Any Speed, criticized the safety of American automobiles, with a particular focus on the Corvair's swing axle rear suspension design, which he argued was prone to causing oversteer and potential accidents. Although General Motors attempted to address some of the criticisms with redesigns, including improvements to the suspension system and safety features, by the time these changes were implemented, the Corvair's reputation had already been tarnished. Consequently, it faced declining sales and increasing pressure from safety regulators, ultimately leading to the cessation of its production in 1969, marking the end of an era for the innovative but controversial vehicle. On number 7, we have the 2000 Ford F-150. The 2000 Ford F-150 is a well-known and popular truck of its time. However, it is still counted among the worst pickups ever made due to its adverse features. These include rough shifting or complete transmission failure, rust issues, less efficient fuel economy, a lack of matching automotive safety technology and modern conveniences, and reliability issues with frequent engine problems or electrical issues. Now, it's obvious that frequent occurrences of such issues would require frequent spending of money, which indeed was a matter of concern for its buyers. Thus, it's considered the worst choice. On number 6, we have the Dodge Ram Daytona. The Dodge Ram Daytona is an interesting piece of automotive history, blending performance and unique styling. Then, it's strange to locate it in this collection of worst pickups. Why so? Let's find out. No doubt, the Daytona offers great performance and elegant style, but it lacks some of the practical features found in other trucks. 
its aerodynamic enhancements, such as the rear wing, which potentially limit cargo space and towing capabilities. Furthermore, as already mentioned, such trucks typically prioritize power over fuel efficiency. Thus, it cannot be rated as the most economical choice for everyday driving, especially with rising fuel prices. Now, as we move ahead, let's have a look at its comfort section. It offers sport-tuned suspensions and may sacrifice some ride comfort in favor of improved handling and performance. This results in a stiffer ride, which is not ideal for drivers seeking a smoother driving experience. Overall, while the Dodge Ram Daytona offers unique styling and performance, its limited practicality and potential maintenance challenges make it a less appealing choice. Close to the top 5. If you're eager to see which ones make the cut, don't hesitate to smash that like button right away. On number 5, we have the Chevrolet SSR. Believe it or not, the Chevrolet SSR seems to be the most handsome in its looks, combining elements of a classic hot rod with a pickup truck. It was admired for its unique aesthetic and sporty appearance, but lacked the function it was traditionally made for. It had a retractable hardtop roof and limited cargo space, which made it incapable of carrying large items. Wondering what lies under the hood? Underneath roared a V8 engine that significantly didn't provide the kind of power expected from a vehicle with such a bold design. Therefore, this creation demanded an unjustifiable premium price. Reports state that many consumers were reluctant to invest in a vehicle that offered little in terms of practicality or performance for the money. The SSR's identity crisis, trying to blend elements of a pickup truck, roadster, and hot rod, left consumers confused about its purpose. As a result, low sales numbers ultimately led to its discontinuation after just a few years on the market. On number four, we have the Lincoln Blackwood. Introduced in 2001, the Lincoln Blackwood could only stay on the market until 2002, with limited availability. Strangely, this is a really short span for its production. Well, it was marketed as a luxury pickup truck, prioritizing its large exterior dimensions, plush interiors, and upscale features over practical utility. The Ford CEO at the time, Jacques Nasser, personally pushed the idea of giving the truck a trunk instead of a flatbed, so it boosted the luxurious interior design and left little room for carrying loads. Thus, it had a small carpeted bed with limited cargo space. To add to its uniqueness, instead of a traditional tailgate, the Blackwood had a power-operated tonneau cover that covered the entire bed. No doubt, this enhanced the truck's luxurious appeal, but in practical terms, it lacked. Let's see what else it can offer for off-roading seekers. Unlike most pickup trucks, this one was only available in rear-wheel drive, lacking the off-road capability and traction control needed for challenging tracks. The truck only had one model year, but took almost three years to sell out. So, for those who desire premium showcase looks, it's a big yes. And for those who are seeking a more practical and versatile pickup truck, it's a big no. On number three, we have the 1976 Cadillac Mirage. The Cadillac Mirage was essentially a conversion of a Cadillac Eldorado, a luxury coupe, into a pickup truck, which brought about an unconventional move, altering the design and purpose of a prestigious luxury vehicle. Thus, a highly elegant design in no time turned into an awkward and aesthetically questionable appearance. But that's just the beginning. We have more to unveil. Due to this conversion, the Mirage's handling and performance suffered. The elongated body and altered weight distribution affected its driving dynamics, resulting in compromised handling and poorer overall performance compared to traditional pickup trucks. And this highly innovative idea finally flopped when it didn't even meet the expectations of sufficient cargo space. Considering all these drawbacks, no one would like to spare for such a worthless creation. And with such negative reviews eventually, its sales figures also dropped and ultimately ceased in its production. On number two, we have the 2020 Jeep Gladiator. Did you know? The Gladiator revived the Jeep truck tradition after a long hiatus, drawing inspiration from classic Jeep trucks like the Willys Jeep truck and the Jeep J series. This innovation was born with impressive off-road capabilities, featuring solid axles, high ground clearance, and Jeep's renowned 4x4 system. However, its setbacks included a major reason, the hefty price it demanded, which could be a deterrent for budget-conscious buyers. Another drawback is that due to its rugged design and off-road capabilities, the Gladiator's fuel economy wasn't as competitive as some other trucks in its class, which could be a concern for daily commuters. Additionally, factors such as less refined quality, smaller bed size, and lower payload capacity ultimately led to it being a less attractive choice compared to other options in the mid-sized truck segment. So what would you choose? Here comes the final pickup. On number one, we have the 2008 
Ford, F-250, and F-350. Let's see what tale this pickup unfolds. Presenting the 2008 Ford F-250 F-350 models, which had a range of powerful engine options, including the Triton V8 and V10 gasoline engines, as well as the legendary Power Stroke diesel engine. No doubt, it was a popular choice among towing capabilities. Then what made it a worse choice? Once again, the fuel demand raised, and simultaneously, the rise in bills for the owners to pay also increased. Additionally, its large size and heavy-duty construction made it quite challenging to adjust in tight spaces or congested urban environments, potentially posing difficulties for everyday driving or parking. Then, then again, it demanded higher maintenance and repair costs. Now, if you're a nature lover, the pickup will surely be out of your bucket list as soon as we disclose that with its lower fuel efficiency and higher emissions, the F-250 F-350 has a more significant environmental impact compared to smaller, more eco-friendly vehicles. Thus, all such causes contribute to allot it a position of the worst pickup ever made. And there you have it, folks. We've taken you on a journey through the highs and lows of pickup truck history, uncovering the 50 worst pickup trucks ever made. Now, it completely depends on you how smartly you can think before putting any pickup on your bucket list. Just remember, every cloud has a silver lining. Also, don't forget to comment down additional names of any pickups that you find even worse than these for us to add to this list. Thanks for joining us on this adventure. Do hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more automotive content that can save you money by warning you of such mistakes. And until next time, drive safe.